Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm really excited to interview a data scientist. Her name is Dawn Chu. Welcome her to the channel. Hey everyone, my name is Dawn. I am a product data scientist at Class Dojo. I was previously at Amazon and Instagram. On the side, I also do interview and career coaching. Product data scientist, what does that mean? Tell us more about that. Yeah, that's a good question. So we get that question a lot as product data scientists. I think the term data scientist is really loaded in the industry. It's like differing from company to company. It's almost even different team to team. So mm -hmm. it really you know, depends on where you're at. From my experience, product data scientists work on a product team, right? So a product, you can think about it as something as broad as say Instagram stories or it could be as something as specific as stickers on Instagram stories, right? It really depends on the size of the company. Product data scientist sits on a product team and your goal is to help the product team inform strategy and how to make the business more money. Okay, so you worked as a business analyst initially and then transitioned into a data scientist role. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between business analyst and a data scientist? There are a lot of different types of data roles in tech and that scope keeps increasing. So again, things keep changing. From my experience when I was a business analyst, it was more of a support type function. I was the only business analyst embedded on an account management team. And my goal was to help them get data so that they can do their work better and build tools so that they can be more efficient in their work. I work with account managers in advertising, right? So they might ask me to pull a report for say a specific advertiser and be like, what were the trends and click rates for these five campaigns? We also built tools that just help make their lives easier. It's really about helping your product team make better decisions and uncover blind spots. So currently I work in an education company. So maybe some of the questions I might try to answer are, do we have a specific set of users for which we have really good product market fit? Is there an untapped market that we haven't looked into that could be a really big potential for revenue for us. So a lot of it is around like helping your product team understand where they should go next. Like what should we invest in? What do we think has the highest return on investment? Maybe we're investing in something and you're like, actually there's no opportunity here. Let's stop investing there and you know, start working on something else that has a higher ROI. The thing that's really nice about the data roles is that because the skills are very transferable. Yeah. So even if you start in one space, mm -hmm. you can easily transition to another if you feel like you're more interested in something else. So I have a lot of data science friends who used to be data engineers or want to become data engineers or their product managers becoming data scientists, you know, vice versa. Everyone kind of switches around based on like what they feel like is the priority in the moment. Tell us about your transition from a business analyst to a data scientist. Okay. When I was a business analyst, I was doing a lot of reactive requests. My whole role was helping the account managers pull data. I felt like I was doing the same thing over and over again. And so I started to feel like I could be a lot more efficient in my work. By some luck, someone had come to me and showed me how to build a data pipeline. And that made me think about, oh, maybe I can scale out these like pipelining solutions for an entire business and take a lot of the work that I do and put it into this database and allow people to pull their own data. So instead of writing SQL queries, I started, I transitioned over into designing and building databases. And that ended up transitioning me from a business analyst to a business intelligence engineer role. Mm -hmm. So what started as a site project ended up becoming like, I think there were four or five business intelligence engineers working on this database. Um, so that was super fun. But then as I did the business intelligence engineer work for a while, I realized it required people who are like really pay a lot of attention to detail and like processes and like optimization. It wasn't really my skill set. I'm much more creative. I love collaborating and communicating and like figuring out new things. And so that's when I started looking into going back into data science. I say going back into the data science. I have never actually been there. I had interviewed for data science roles in 2017 before going to Amazon. I was unsuccessful at that time in getting any data science offers, but I knew I wanted to get into tech, so I took the business analyst role at Amazon. But when it was 2019, I was like, I think I'm ready to try going yeah. back into data science, like getting back to those interviews again. Uh -huh. And so I started interviewing. I had tech experience under my belt, so that was really helped me, I think, in my interview process because mm -hmm. I just understood better what a tech company does mm -hmm. and how products work. And ultimately got a few offers, and that's when I decided to go to at that time they were called Facebook. That's really helpful. One of the advice that I, I give people is mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to become a data scientist, 
try applying for it. But if you don't get it, try to go for other roles like data analysts or business analysts. And yeah. then after a couple of years of experience, you can try again. I really agree with it. Yeah. I mean, I've done it and I, because I do career coaching, yeah. I actually know a lot of folks who right. have done something similar. Yeah. It works out well, but I, I do agree. If you're able to get into data science right away, Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> but if not, like, find a way to get your foot in the door because I think just the exposure of being in tech and being near a product team is so helpful for you to eventually get those data science mm -hmm. roles. Sometimes on YouTube, I see people like, if you want to do data science or if you want to do machine learning, just do machine learning. I'm like, obviously, that is the best route yeah. if you can swing it. But uh, unfortunately, not everyone is fortunate enough to land their dream role right away, go for something else and then try later. So There's also so many other data analyst right. roles, right? So you have data analysts, marketing analysts, sales analysts, mm. like there's so many ways to just get your foot in the door and like get yourself working with data every single day that really helps you with the transition and makes it so much easier. Yeah, I love that. This is a question that we get all the time. How much statistics and machine learning would you have to know to become a successful data scientist? Yeah, I get that question a lot too. It really depends on the type of data scientist you want to be. So there are two general categories of data scientists. The first is product data science, which is what I do. And then there's machine learning data science. Machine learning data scientists tend to go deeper into the statistics realm, and so they tend to be tested and interviewed more often on deep statistics mm -hmm. or more technical statistics. For product data science, there is an expectation that you know stats really, really well, but you don't need to know more complex like model building type of uh, statistical concepts. What about machine learning? Most I've seen are the deepest, most technical types of questions I've seen in product data science interviews would ask you about a linear regression or a logistic regression. Mm -hmm. And going back to what I said earlier, very specifically, how would you apply it to a problem? So you mentioned before that you were actually rejected by Facebook four times before getting an offer. What was it that you changed or tried out that made the difference the fourth time around when you got the offer. Facebook, or more specifically Instagram, was always my dream job. Mm -hmm. I just loved the idea of working for a company that I use on a daily basis and that I really enjoy as a user. The first time I was rejected was when I was in college. I applied for an internship and just didn't hear back. The second time I applied for an internship and I got the internship. So I did a summer internship at Facebook and didn't get a return offer. And then the third time I interviewed, I actually made it to the final round, but I think we all have kind of been there where you go to an interview and you come up and you're like, I didn't get that job. You kind of just know where your gaps are. And then finally in 2019, I applied again interviewed and got a job offer. I think what finally made a difference, I really spent a lot of time reflecting on what I felt was missing. There were the product sense interviews that I was just completely struggling with. I didn't understand how to size opportunity. I didn't understand how to think about product strategy. And then the second piece was the statistics piece. So when you ask me about p-values, like I can recite back what it means based on the textbooks that I've studied in college. But in terms of like actually communicating it, understanding what it means for a business, I had absolutely no idea. So once I got my foot in the door at Amazon, I kept thinking about ways where I can start to understand those two topics mm. better. So I spent a lot of time like one-on-ones with product managers, just understanding what they do, oh. just hearing from them, like how they think about things. Mm. I also product managed my own projects and I also started studying for product mm. manager interviews. It's so extra because I'm interviewing for data science roles, but here I am like studying for product manager interviews. Mm. But that gave me a lot of understanding on product strategy. Mm. So so that was the first piece. Then the second piece was experimentation. I worked with account managers. A lot of them do experimentation for their clients, not in the same way that you would do it on the product team, but enough that it gave me an understanding of how to execute on an experiment. And then I also read books and watch YouTube videos. I walked through the same problem multiple times until I felt super confident in my ability to answer them in real time, right? In a stressful situation. It's also really important to have very good frameworks for answering these types of questions. That helps so much with two things. One, when you're interviewing and you're like really stressed out, like you can fall back on your framework and mm -hmm. it's really easy, you know it well. And then the second piece is it really helps with communication. So mm -hmm. I lay out my framework. This is how I'm planning on answering the question. And then they can follow on my thought process just mm -hmm. by looking at the framework. Yeah. 
That's really good. I think it's similar to software engineering. People sometimes ask, like, I just don't have any experience with system mm -hmm. design. Well, that's okay because the interviews don't necessarily base on your experience. It helps if you have the experience mm -hmm. around it, but you can still study for the interviews. And it's sort of like a different skill set, like actually knowing the subject versus yeah. being able to interview for the subject. We've been talking a little bit about interviewing for data science roles. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone who's trying to break into the data science industry? To be a data scientist, you need a few skills or categories of skills to make it through the interviews, right? This advice is very specific to breaking into the industry rather than what it takes to be successful in the industry. Mm -hmm. The general categories of knowledge that you need to have are coding skills. I would say focus on SQL and then maybe extend to Python after, but SQL is like you must know it really, really well. Um, the second area is experimentation and statistics, right? Do you understand binomial distributions? Do you understand hypothesis testing? The third piece is product sense. So this one was the one that was the mm. hardest for me. How do you help your product team make good decisions? How do you as a data scientist decide what the most important questions to answer are? So that one I would recommend reading the book, Cracking the Product Manager Interview. And also if you have access to product managers, talk to them. And then the last piece is behavioral interviews, right? You need for every single job, um, but behavioral interviews to me is the one that you should be 100% prepared for no matter what interview you go to because you can 100% prepare for it. I also have a video from another data scientist and she talks more about data science and machine learning. So watch that video if you're interested. And thank you, Dom, for being here. Thanks, Bye.